So in just a little more than an hour, closing arguments set to begin in Donald Trump's trial here in New York City, and we could get a verdict by the end of the week. Yeah, here we go. The Wall Street Journal editorial board arguing D.A. Bragg has not proved his case, writing, quote, disguising the bookkeeping is a misdemeanor. It's past its statute of limitations. And Mr. Bragg jury rigged the felonies using an alleged second crime that doesn't look like a crime. Conviction or no by a Manhattan jury, this is a case that never should have been brought. Our Fox News legal editor, Carrie Irvine, joins us now. I'm sure you agree with that after interviewing you for the last few weeks during this trial. What do you expect to happen and what does happen if there's a hung jury? If you have at least one juror that says, I can't determine if he's guilty or innocent. Yeah, well, that would mean this continues to go on. Now, the judge did say for just today that he expects closing arguments to take all day, which I was a little surprised about because normally they take, you know, maybe a couple of hours. But it's been hard to follow, and that's because the prosecution is bringing, I don't even want to say a thin case, a case that just doesn't make sense. It's circular. It's challenging to understand what the crimes are. And so I suspect that they're going to need time just to even lay out for all of us, you know, why we're there. Then the defense has an opportunity to respond, and they'll have their argument. And then the prosecution, and I think the former president mentioned this in um, a post, they have the last word. But the judge expects that to go all day, so we'll see. So if you're the defense, and, and they haven't proved their case to prosecution, do you keep it nice and short, or do you address each point that they make? It's a great question. I would say you want to be as sharp and succinct as possible, because one of the challenges, even during cross-examination, when the defense was crossing Michael Cohen, it was hard for people sitting there, including myself, to follow the timeline. You know, we'd be in 2018 and 2020, and it's perjury this year, lying this year. It got hard to follow. And so um, I would hope that they would lay it out very clearly, maybe even use a chart, a timeline, to say this is why this makes no sense. And even if you believe this, the standard is still beyond a reasonable doubt. And, you know, that is the key here. The prosecutor has to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. That is a high burden, and we'll see what the jury thinks okay. about that. And we were talking during the commercial break because Donald Trump has been posting on social media. He doesn't like that the other attorneys, the prosecution, get the last word. But in the state of New York, or is it the city of New York, I guess the state, it's... Uh, their team goes first, then Trump's team goes, mm -hmm. then the prosecution has the a final word. How long is that? Just a little reminder, or could they take... It's Half a, a day. It depends. That's why I think the judge said it will last all day, and then he's going to instruct the jury tomorrow. We are going to have court tomorrow. He said his instructions to the jury, jury will only take about an hour, uh, and then the jury will deliberate at that point, and we'll see how what long that takes. instructions to the juror? Isn't it just do you think he's guilty or innocent? It's, it's a bit more complicated than that because they have to go through the various elements of the law, what that means, what the standard of proof is. That was a big argument last week. Is it beyond a reasonable doubt for everything? The defense would say yes because this is a criminal trial, whereas the government was saying, well, this crime is just preponderance of the evidence, meaning more likely than not. And, you know, that was frustrating for the defense saying, no, 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 you can't have it both ways. If it's a crime, the standard is high. You can't have a different standard because you want to get this one over the finish line. Real quickly, because we only got 10 seconds, mm -hmm. but can there be objections in the closing arguments? There can be. I don't know how well that plays with the jury, though. So that's always a calculation that both lawyers have to make. How much are they going to irritate the jury? You know, they want the jury to come out of this feeling good about whatever it is they said. Do objections annoy them? Possibly. Do you think we'll have this will wrap up by the end of the week? Yeah, I, I do think so. I, I do. It really depends on how long the jury takes to deliberate. Yeah. yeah. Thank you Thanks, so much, Carrie. Thank we you. appreciate it. Yeah, we do. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.